Hi, this is Nick Schneider, and today I want to go over some of the code we put together for our paper. And all this code is in Mathematica. All right, I'm going to start with the supplemental code S1, and we're going to go through some of the uses here in order to show you the basics. In Mathematica, if you haven't used it, what you can do is you can use shift return to evaluate a line. And the first one here will let us set the directory for whatever video we are using. The sample video that we need is going to be video S2, and I hid that on my desktop. And so now we have set file path to the location of the video. We can go through and import some of the metadata about the video, such as the frame rate and the total frames, as that will be useful in the analysis. If you want to know what other metadata options there are, you can use this line of import the file path and elements. And this will return a list of all the different elements that you can get when it, for the options of the metadata so that you can better understand the video file. All right, the first thing we want to do is set our reference image, and this is going to be from the video of the gold crystal growing. So we set our background image where we can see all we have is the microscope overlays and then just a background image where no crystals have started growing yet. If there's a desired rotation, you can set that. In our case, we're actually not going to rotate at all, so we'll just put that in as zero. Say you wanted to grab a subsection of this image, you can use the image take function, but first you have to identify the rows and columns that you'd like to keep. An easy way to get those is by using the get indices function, where you can right click on an image, use get indices, and click on the points that you want the extent of the crop to go. So it would go from this point to this point, including all the rows and columns in between. You can use Command C or Control C to copy those, and you can always paste it down in a line such as this. I'm going to use the, the default options here. And just go evaluate, and we can see that we have a cropped image, which I have called the reference image cropped. And this has just really gotten rid of the microscope overlay. Okay, a nice feature of Mathematica is that you can use the manipulate function, which will make these processes dynamic. So what we're going to do is we're going to import the image at some frame. We'll do the rotation and then do the cropping. And we'll do this for all the frames in the video. So from one to the total number, one total number of frames and steps of one. And so we have now have a slider where we can go through and see this video. If you hit this little plus sign, you can step through so you can see what each frame looks like. I've also added the ability to show what the subtracted background version looks like. So if we take and subtract the reference image from the first image, then we this is what the what we get. So this is what it looks like after background subtraction. And we can see that for the entire video. Okay, now we're going to jump through and make the first two figures of the paper. We have some helper functions here that I'll evaluate, which convert indices into coordinates in an image. And what we're going to do is show what happens if you did actually want to rotate the image. So in the example of copper lecture deposition, and we have this sample image here, you might want to rotate it so that the electrode is horizontal. And so we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to rotate by a predefined angle that we know is the one that makes it so that our image is has a horizontal electrode. And so here what we show is the rotated image. We can then go ahead and crop this image in order to get a nice subsection. And then we can also overlay a couple graphics, some disks. And we do that here where we do an image show, we show the image with a couple of disks at the two crop corners, just so that we have an idea of where we had clicked before. So this is just a sample of what happens when you actually rotate and then do cropping after the rotation. If we jump back to our gold crystals, we can redefine our crop indices and what our reference image is supposed to look like, just so that 
we don't get mixed up with any reused variables. And one of the things that's really important for these images is to do some denoising. So we'll take import the image, we'll rotate it by zero angle, so that it doesn't rotate at all, but if you had a rotation, it would do that here. And then we'll do the cropping, and then we're going to apply a total variation filter, which will go through and iteratively remove some of the noise. So here is the raw image after it's been cropped, and here is what the image looks like after doing a total variation filter. Now if we go and subtract the two, if we subtract the, the cropped image from the filtered image, we get an estimate of the noise for this particular frame. And we see that there's actually quite a bit of noise that's been removed by this total variation filter, which is going to make identifying this object much easier. Next we'll consider some background subtraction. So here's our background image. If we take and do the subtraction like we showed in the manipulate dynamic object earlier, we get another sample of that, but here just for a single frame. And now we can show what happens when we binarize these images. So if we take, first if we take and do the background subtraction, and then do a filtering on this image here, and then binarize it, we end up getting this image where the object, the gold crystal, from here is clearly, but has clearly been identified without any false positives. We can then go through and do an edge detection on this image and we get a nice faint line here of all the edge pixels of this object here. And in order to make it show up a little bit better, we'll do a dilation, which will go through and thicken up that line. So here's what the object looks like down here, the, or the edges of the object is what, what it looks like here. Had we not, however, done the total variation filter and background subtraction, we would have had a much noisier image. So it's really important to do that background subtraction and the image and the noise filtering when you are able to, in order to have a much more, in order to much better extract the edge of your object. Now one thing that happens is sometimes these objects move. If we go back up top to the original video, We'll see, I'm going to turn off background subtraction. So this is the raw data that's just been cropped. We see that this crystal jumps around a little bit. So we might want to correct for that. One good way to do this, an easy way to do it, when you have a single object, is that you can actually use the centroid of this object to, in order to map the translation of the particle. So what we're going to do here is we'll import the image, rotate it, crop it. We will do the filtering, we'll do the binarization. And then what we'll do is once we have this binary image, so that's this image here where we have just a solid set of pixels that are connected for the object, uh, white pixels, so they have a value of one in the binary image, we can go through and grab the morphological components. And if you haven't used morphological components in Mathematica, I highly recommend you look at some of the options that are available because you can do some very powerful things when you have a binary image such as what we're working with. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the centroid of each of these. And I'm doing this, this takes sometimes takes a little bit of time, so I'll evaluate it as we talk. Once we have the centroid, we will put that centroid as the in this list called center. Uh, one thing that we'll note is that in the first few frames there was no crystal, so this ends up throwing an error. So we have some error catching that whenever there is an error trying to extract center of mass, we'll just arbitrarily set the center to zero, zero. And that's just, again, arbitrary definement, uh, definition so that we don't get errors later on. Um, but we know that when this shows up that there, the problem is that there was no object in the image region. So this will go through, and now we'll have a list in center. Actually, we can, we can look at what center is. We'll see that in the first frame it didn't identify an object, so that's why it's 0, 0. But then we have a list of the pixel centers of the crystal throughout time. The list isn't as useful as, the, as a visual, so what we'll go through is define the translation, and we'll arbitrarily align all the crystals to the crystal in the last image. And so we'll find the translations where we'll subtract any of the center positions from the center at the last frame. And that's what's going to happen here. And we'll wrap this inside and manipulate so that we can again see the results dynamically. And we see here that we very readily are able to 
realign the crystal when it's in the field of view, and that it jumps around a little bit when there's no object involved. This process is actually very rigorous, and there is, in this example, there's only one error out of the total of the 81 frames about where there the crystal is visible. So every once in a while you'll have a false positive that will cause an error such as this that we see here, and this is easily fixed if you need to, or it will just show up as noise in the data. One of the really nice things, once you have created one of these manipulates, you can actually export as a video. You can add more options if you need higher quality, but we can go through and evaluate this, and it will export every frame of this manipulate so that you'll actually then have a video of your dynamic results. Okay, so today I just wanted to go over some of the first few figure creations that we have in our paper. There are a couple other supplemental code files that you can go through in Mathematica that are just as easy to use by evaluating the cells as you go through and selecting the right video during the uh, steps that were required. And I hope you find these useful. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them our way. All right, thanks. Have a good one.